What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Engineer Survival episode number 32 on Triton. We're still on Triton, but this is the last episode we're going to be on Triton because this episode we're going to be taking off. Off camera I write it, this was actually flipped over, but just for that little cinematic at the start I made that go the right way. Speaking of that little cinematic at the start, uh, last episode we enabled this antenna and it's been a couple of days. Uh, and so by now, you know, trade stations have had a really good amount of time to set up shop up there just above Triton. And I know for a fact that there should be some up there because after we set this antenna a couple of them got back to me and said that they wanted to set up shop around Triton. Now when I say that I mean I went into the settings and actually like manually changed the position of the, some of the like super far out ones to, to be a little bit close. So there should be, what is that? There should be a supply transport there. No, there should be five trade stations scattered. I don't know where they are. I mean, it, they're, they're technically in my GPS menu because I had to set up their positions, but there should be, uh, I, I don't have them turned on. They should be scattered around Triton somewhere. So. Uh, once we get back up there, there are five stations nearby that we can go and search for. There are going to be two ore ones, two trader ones, and one builder one. So we've got stations we can go find, uh, which is going to be our next goal because that's going to that's going to be pretty awesome. We've been looking for stations for a couple of episodes, and finally we'll be able to find them after we set up this cool uh, outpost here. But first, we need to actually refuel our thing. I don't know if our thing actually needs refueling. No, it's got 77, so technically it doesn't need refueling, but I want to make sure that this proof of concept works. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add like some sort of refueling apparatus to this thing, and then we're going to have to make it refuel. Now the refueling apparatus itself is going to be very easy to make. We're just going to uh, put on one of these things. Boop, grab the materials, easy peasy, stick it right here in the back. Uh, and once we do that, we can just add a small little one of these guys. So let me grab the materials for that as well. I'll just make it like a like a all-way one because I can't be asked to do... You know what? Well, I can be asked. We're going to make it look nice a little bit. By the way, you might be wondering why I have the red color out. Last episode when I was asking about recoloring at the end of the episode, what I should recolor around the base, a lot of you said that you really like the gray. So I'll keep it gray like that. But some of you said that I should make these red. And one, uh, one person even said I should make these red because obviously video game logic uh, means that anything explodable needs to be red. So, uh, so yeah. Explodable little tanks are now red. Don't run into them, please. They're very red. You should be able to see them. Uh, all right, so I want to test this thing out. Let's hop in here real quick. Uh, now, this is temporary. I think we're going to remove this once we use it. So let's just keep it red, and we won't set up anything on the bottom to use it. But uh, let's try and, uh, and take off a little bit. Let's turn these on. And we're going to glide ourselves over to this thing right here, where we're going to be able to recharge our battery as well at wait no we don't even have a battery so we don't need we don't get to recharge our battery but we do get to re whoops recharge our tanks and put this in an area where it shouldn't flip over okay so now that's there i'm gonna use p even though you guys always say i shouldn't but i, I didn't want to put it on the hot bar okay so now that's there it should be refueling it is not that could be because we don't have enough stuff let's go quickly and check i want to see our hydrogen tanks Nope, they are filled. They're just not. They're just not doing anything. I wonder if I have them on stockpile. Uh, hydrogen tank. You guys are not on stockpile. You guys are on. Are the refills it? Is that what I need? I don't think that's what I need. I think that auto refills bottles. Mm, last thing I can think of is that this is maybe not connected, like I think it is. Uh, connected there. Connected here because it's green, and connected there. Hmm. Man, this is when we got to do all of our sanity checks and go back through everything and make sure that it's still working. So you should be powering up, right? You should be gaining fuel. It's going to be something obvious, right? Oh, you know what it might be? Wait. You guys don't hoard materials, do you? Let me just real quick go and grab some ice and give it a quick check. I'm going to hop down here. I don't know why my drill always goes out of position uh, when I fly around. It's really weird. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever ever have that happen, but when I fly around like this... Okay, it's not going to do it when you're watching, but next time it happens, I'll, ch I'll, I'll tell you. When you fly around, the drill always starts going like off-screen, and you just have to like press X twice to uh, turn off your jetpack and back on. And that'll put it back on screen. I don't know why it goes off-screen, though, in the, uh, in the first place. Alright, with a little bit of ice, let's hop over here and see if that fixes our problem. So ice goes in there. It should immediately... Yeah, wow. Okay, it immediately got eight. But let's see if it did any of this stuff. Uh, 74. Huh. So what that tells me is that this thing is not fully 
powered, but it is. It is, though. Alright, there's something funky going on, and I don't know what it is. Let's toggle them off and see if that if that does it. So if I toggle those guys off... Yes, okay, so now it's refueling. Thing is, though, that's so weird. Why... Okay, so when these are on, they eat all of the uh, all of the fuel. But when they're off, the fuel's allowed to go there. So here's the question. How am I able to get my stockpiled fuel from the hydrogen tank over, over to that? How can I get this thing right here to output its fuel so that this has way less priority than that? Is there like a priority system on fuel? I feel like this is basic SE stuff that I'm for some reason not uh, not getting here. Um, show in terminal, show in HUD, stockpile on or off. All right, everyone in the comments, because I'm sure someone knows what I'm doing wrong. How do these work? Like if I have these all with 100% hydrogen, and no ice in there, so just all the hydrogen from here. How do I get that to output into this? Like, how do I how do I tell the game that these right here are higher priority to uh, to fill than those guys? I don't know. I'm sure it's something super simple. It doesn't honestly matter because we're about to leave this area, but for the future, it might be really good to know. Uh, so, okay, that thing is filled up. Is there anything else I want to do on this planet? Um, that's a good question. Do I want to bring back some ice? I could. Uh, I could, like, load these things up with a little bit of ice. That's not a bad idea. Alright, you know what? We're not going to bring ice because, first of all, every time I put ice in there, it gets sucked up by this thing, and I don't want to turn these off right now. So, it does honestly, it doesn't even matter because we have, like, 100k ice up there, so we're not going to bring any. That said, I did just see an unknown signal pop down right over here, so I'm going to go check that thing out. Uh, let's go and, and, uh, and see what we can get out of this thing. Hopefully it doesn't explode in my face. Someone told me in the comments that that can happen, so hopefully... That's not a thing. This one looks actually kind of nice. Let's see. Do we get anything good? It looks like we get zebra gloves and they're of green quality. <laughs> All right, uh, let's let's check this out. Ah, yes, some space credits, which we'll definitely use in the near future. Um, I'm going to delete this because I can eat the materials, put them back in our base. Uh, by the way, so we're, we're about to leave uh, Triton and go to space. A lot of you guys want to see us do some space work, plus that's where all the trade stations are. So, uh, they haven't yet put a, a trade station down on Triton. But, um, but if you guys want to see more stuff on Triton, we can always come back later, so put in the comments if you want to see that. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to go to space, we're going to do a little bit of space work, and then uh, we're going to do a little bit of trading, and finally we're going to go back to Pertam. Probably not this episode, probably next episode we're going to make our return trip to, uh, to Pertam. So plenty of time. Uh, if you guys want to see something other than Pertam, if you guys want to see us not go to Pertam, uh, definitely let me know in the comments and we can correct our course. But otherwise, we're going to go back to Pertam and uh, and work on that giant base down there, do a little bit of combat. You guys know the drill. Lots of uh, lots of lots of Pertam stuff. All right. Uh, why did I just put that in there? I have no clue. <laughs> uh, I think it went in here anyway. Let's grab those. Just taking a look around, I think we're pretty much good. We have that thing set up. We have a uh, an infinite power source right there. I think this base is good to go. Let's take a, a, a couple of pictures here, a couple of steam pictures, and then we'll be good to lift off. All right, everybody, it's time to lift off. We're, it's time to say goodbye to this base for now. Again, we might come back later. But let's step down over here to our awesome uh, pod, and we got to get ready to lift off. Now, the procedure is not very difficult. We just press P and go up. Uh, actually, we have to turn these on as well. Uh, should you know what let's real quick before we go let's make sure we have at least one parachute in the bag because otherwise uh if this thing starts falling it's not going to be coming back down so real quick i'm going to make a parachute so that we have it all right we got our canvas let's hop back over here and we're going to throw that in right here canvas did i want to put all five in there probably not let's put two in the other one just uh just so we have them spread out a little bit and i think we'll be good all right uh let me real quick also do one more thing because i want my parachutes to be turned off currently. I don't want them to be on auto deploy uh, as we're going down. We have So we have the automatic deploy down there uh, if we need it. All right, are you guys ready to lift off? We have a main ignition on right there. We turn on the little things and we should be ready to go. Three, two, one, lift off. And we're gonna go very quickly because this thing has way too much power for its own good. Uh, let's keep our speed up. I don't really wanna go that fast. I'm gonna turn these off. I want to stay between 200 and 300 maybe, maybe even 100 and 200 honestly. But yeah, this thing this thing is way too fast. This is just like the exit from Pertam when we ended up going way too fast and we couldn't do anything. But uh, let's let's keep an eye out for our asteroids that we're trying to go to. I think they're right up there. We're going to want to bleed a little bit of speed off. I'm going to let us go a little faster than this. But I want to stay between 100 and 200 now because I do not want to crash headfirst into our little asteroid. 
That would be bad. Granted, we would respawn on the ships that are right next to it, but uh, but we would lose our, our awesome little craft. Let's take a look at the planet as we're going up. Oh, what a beautiful view of Pertam right there. Take a quick screenshot. I, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I really love taking screenshots. <laughs> All right. Keep, let's keep going up 60 to 100. Let's, let's bring it back to 100 to 200. Welcome to the upper atmosphere. We have a P gravity of 0.7 and dropping very quickly. Um, once we get to zero, I think I think our stuff is just outside of the uh, of the range of this thing. So, in fact, we should also be seeing some stations nearby. Now, the stations, the five stations that are up here, are actually scattered uh, around the uh, around the entire planet. So there might only be like one on this side, one or two. I don't know exactly where they are. Um, wait, Triton refuel outpost. Oh no, that's our antenna. Right, I forgot. Okay, let's turn this off. No, we don't need to. We still have pre gravity, so we're still fine. I see those asteroids up there. Actually, I think I see where our ship is as well. Yeah, can you see it? I don't see the ship itself, but I see the asteroid where I think the ship is is uh, is chilling. All right, how's our speed? Let's let's keep it up to 100, just so we're going a little quick. We don't want to we don't want to be going too slowly. Beautiful view of Pertam. Got the sun over there. In fact, I can even bump it up a little bit because we can stop pretty much on a dime with our uh, with our our two upward facing thrusters. So there's no uh, there's no issue there. All right, 200 with a p gravity of 0.1817. We're almost out. There she is. There's a, there's that beautiful planet. It looks much better from the ground. It looks very wonky over here because of all the mountains, but it looks so much cooler. Actually, I wish I could have summited that mountain over there. That look, actually looks kind of cool. Uh, maybe next time we come back. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on so we go to a maximum of 100. I don't want to be going too too quickly. I'll tell you guys, I'm a little worried that we're not going to see any any uh, any stations up here. I know that I placed them. I know I placed one that's somewhat above the uh, the refueling outpost. The other ones are kind of scattered around the area. So I don't know. Hey, we can actually see the other planets now. That's kind of nice. All right, with our 0.6 p gravity, 0.5, we're about to leave the uh, the the influence of Triton because it's very small in Space Engineers. Um, and we're actually about to get to our ships. Uh, I believe our ships are over there. I don't know if we'll be able to see them, but they should be over there. We're at zero P gravity. Let's go ahead and probably stop because we want to change our course here. I'm going to go ahead and turn us toward where we want to go, which is right there. And, uh, and we'll start going. Let's get to a speed of about 50. There we go. That's pretty good. And we'll kind of cruise. We'll just kind of cruise there. I kept this thing on, by the way, because once we get to those ships over there, we're probably going to move. And I want to bring this thing with me, so it's actually good to have some sort of uh, some sort of connector that we can use. So that's why that is on. Oh, I can see our ship! You can just barely see it if I turn the camera right here. You can see the yellow thing off in the corner. That's where we're headed. Well, we're headed a little bit beside it, so we don't crash into the, uh, the space rock. But that's where we're headed in the end run. Our little ship that we, uh, well, for the first one is the Rigatoni one, which we built on Pertam a couple episodes back. Uh, and the second one is um, the other ship, which we convinced to join us. We found it floating in space, and we were like, hey, bro, you want to, my, my ship's called Rigatoni, what's not to like? And he was like, yeah, I'll join you. And that's how, that's how we got it. We definitely did not conquer it by force. <laughs> All right. We're almost there. Can we see the iron yet? That's the, that's the only good thing about this space rock, or this set of space rocks, is the iron that's there. Alright, let's slow ourselves down a little bit. And we'll, uh, we'll aim ourselves over here now. Alright everybody, welcome home! Uh, there's our ship, there's our beautiful ship, still here, not trash collected, that's always good. Alright, let's slow ourselves down a little bit. And I think, do we have a connection for this, or are we gonna have to make another one? I think we might have to make another one, because we used the connection for the, uh... For that guy right there, that little space thing. How's our fuel, by the way? 100%. That could only mean one thing. Probably our, uh... Probably we have a thing that's running. Um... Yeah, okay, so we do have some stuff in the O2HU generator that's been, uh, kind of working for us. Alright, let's leave this thing right here for now. And, uh, and we'll try and build a, uh, a little connection. Put that right there. Awesome. Welcome back to space, everybody. Rigatoni1, I've missed you. Also, ship that we conquered, I mean, uh, convinced to join us, I've missed you as well. Okay, let's hop in here and uh, and get another connector built for that thing. 
Now it doesn't actually need a, uh, a like a a path to the um, the conveyor system. It only needs a connection so it stays it stays uh, hooked to the ship. So let's get that built. All right. So I'm thinking we just stick it on this red block right here. That's the block that I added because we depressurized our thing. So let's stick it right there. Uh, we don't have everything we need. We need eight motors still. I don't know if we have those in the thing, but let's uh, let's try and make them if we don't have them. Ten motors. Can you make? Or okay, so it can make them. Awesome. And let's uh, let's go ahead and yoink those. All right, all components successfully withdrawn. There we go. There's our connection. Let's go ahead and put this thing wherever it is over here into there. And then we're gonna start flying around because we want to try and find some space stations. Man, this thing is powerful. It honestly could have done with only one engine in each direction and probably didn't need that large engine which we built so it wouldn't crash into the ground. And we have connection. I'm going to press P, even though again that's not what I'm supposed to do, especially when I have multiple ships connected, but I don't think it caused any problems. Yep, everything looks to be good. Okay, let's hop on board our ships um, and, and do a quick status check before we go. Let's make sure that, uh, that we have all the iron we need pretty much because that's, uh, that's what this rock has. Okay, taking a peek in our refinery, it looks like we have 123k iron that is refined, and we have another 174k iron. In addition, I believe we have... Unless, no, it actually it probably refined everything, because we used to have a bunch on the, uh, on the ship. Whoops, oh my god, what is going on? We used to have a bunch on the ship right here. Right... He, yeah, right here, but I think it probably got refined. Yep, looks like it all got refined. Well, I guess there's no hurt in grabbing a little bit more iron before we head off. Let's go and grab a another little handful. Man, we're not even going to come close to uh, using all of the iron in this deposit. It really is a quite a large deposit. I wonder how it compares to the deposits on planets. If it's the same size, because I know planet deposits are quite large as well, but you usually can't see the whole thing. So you can't really tell how large they are. Until you've, like, mined it all. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. I wonder how it compares. The reason we're getting all this right now is because we don't know when the next time we're going to find iron is. Uh, even though we have quite a bit in the in the bank over there, we don't know. Uh, plus, we might might as well sell some if we if we have plenty. All right, I think an extra 358k iron will do. It's definitely nothing to scuff at. Um, that will give us well, we already have about 300k iron in the bank, so that'll give us another probably 300k iron. I don't remember exactly what the efficiency is, but uh, yeah, definitely definitely not a bad thing. Let's uh, be careful of our speed because we have a lot of momentum here with our uh, with our little ship that's carrying so much iron. Don't want to don't want to crash into that thing with the with the force of a train. All right, let's hop in here, and we'll prepare to go. Go find some trade. Go find some stations. Wait a second, is that one? No, that's a mining carriage. Okay, <laughs> I don't think that's one at least. All right, let's uh, let's hop in this thing and we'll set off on our adventure to attempt to find some trade stations welcome back to space and so the search for space stations begins we know that they're around the outside of this beautiful planet right here so we're just going to kind of fly this way and uh hope we find one uh we just need to stay out of the p gravity because i didn't put any inside the p gravity that wouldn't make sense they would all fall to the ground of course if i wanted one on the ground i guess that would have been a decent way to achieve that but it's no matter we just need to fly I think probably this way will yield one. Um, honestly, any direction will probably eventually find one, but this way will yield one for sure. We can see our Triton refuel outpost, which is always a great sign. Let me move my H so I see. Uh, actually, maybe I'll keep it on normal display. So if we press Alt, we'll see the we'll see the name. But if we don't press anything, we'll just see the signature. Okay, that makes sense. All right, let's fly this way. We're gonna get up to a decent speed. Maybe like uh, I don't know, maybe 200, maybe 100, because this thing doesn't slow slow down very fast. And then we're going to kind of glide. Uh, yeah, maybe we don't want to go 100. No, we'll go 100. Let's let's go 100. Now, here's the other thing. If I see any asteroids that are already pre-generated, not like that one right there, but like a little cluster, then there's a good chance that that's where one is because I would have had to spawn the asteroids to spawn the thing. Since asteroids spawn when you go in any random direction. Uh, I'm going to keep going this way, though. So we can keep an eye on uh, on, on, on the beautiful Pertam. All right, we're going to uh, 99. Are we in peak? Wait. Oh shoot, hang on. Okay, something is something is affecting. Uh, something has thrusters turned on. Uh, what is it? It looks like it's not Rigatoni One. It looks like it is. Wait, our own ship. What? 
Okay, dampener's off. It's not this guy. Ah, it's that guy right there. Okay, so we need to real quick, let's hop out of this thing and let's go turn those thrusters off because otherwise they're going to mess with us a little bit. Uh, luckily, since Space Engineers implemented that thing a while back where you can uh, where you can attach to ships, we don't have to worry about flying into the ship when we uh, when we get out of the cockpit or anything. We just kind of glide with it with the auto dampeners. All right, let's hop in here, turn these babies off, and we should be good. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're staying to one speed. That's exactly what we wanted. Awesome. Let's hop back in the main cockpit right here, and we can uh, we can continue our journey to find a space station. One of five is what we're looking for. There's our Triton refueling outpost. Nice. Such a good such a good operation there. Uh, I'm seeing some asteroids up there, but you know, some of these could be ones that we've already been to as well. You never really know. Uh, since since uh, we did go to some when we went from uh, Pertam to this planet, so yeah, you never really know which ones are which. Let's get a little more speed. Why is that thruster right there not working? Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's see if we can repair that thruster uh, while we're flying. So we're looking for a thrust, thruster. All right, we're looking for a ion thruster. Let's pop out of here. Oh, and as I say that, we have a white signal over here. That's a freighter. Okay, so we don't we don't really care about a freighter. Uh, all right, let's use our ion thruster. I want the small one. And we're gonna grab as much as we can for this. Can I withdraw 80 thruster components? Now I know we brought them up but they might just be on that thing. And honestly, we probably don't even have enough to make a thruster, so I don't know what I'm even trying to do, since we probably only have enough to use like ones every once in a while. So one thruster, one thruster, uh, instead of like the 80 that it requires to repair one of these. But I know this one's like half built, right? Wait, where, where are the ones we were trying to work on? Oh, these ones are the ones I was looking at. This one right here is half built, so maybe it has the thruster components. Yeah, it has some of them. Okay, I'll see if I have enough thruster components. To, uh, to make that work. Let's hop in here. Hello, Rigatoni. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, thruster components, do we have enough? I don't remember how many we brought up. Okay, we do have, yeah, we do have enough. Let's grab 100, it should be enough. I think we only needed a couple. And we should be able to repair at least one thruster on this side. So now we have the four full thrusters instead of just three. Okay, I think I'm fine with that. We're going to leave that for now since I know I don't have enough thruster components to upgrade both this one and that one. Um, so I think that's going to be good. All right, let's hop back in here and continue floating around the uh, beautiful planet of, uh, of Triton. Oh, we're in the gravity. Oh, we've got to be careful. We're actually pretty heavy in the gravity now. So let's, uh, let's, let's angle ourselves up this way right here so we can get out of it. Uh, we'll also start to speed up a little bit so that if we don't get out of it, we'll we'll slingshot past. Let's turn on our dampeners as well so we stop ourselves from going in that direction. And we should be able to get out of this, but if we can't, then uh, then that would be, you know, not so great. Okay, we're having a bit of a hard time getting out of the gravity, so this is not good. Uh, I'm going to need to uh, go forward, I think. I think we're going to need to slingshot around this. That's really the only thing we can do. So we need to try and get as much speed as possible. Otherwise, we're going to slam headfirst into the bottom of, of Triton. And that's not good. So we're getting enough, uh, as much speed as possible. I don't know what the escape velocity of this planet is, but it can't be that high. It's only Triton. It's a little bit smaller than a regular planet. So I think if we're going probably around 300, we should be solid. Uh, we should slingshot around it. I'm going to keep aiming toward... Well, I'm going to keep aiming in this one direction, actually. And we should be fine. All right, P-Gravity 0.23. Should be good. It's a little bit hairy, I'll, I'll admit, because there's a mountain that's right in front of us. But we should be good. Yep, we're seeing our... Uh, we're seeing our... Nope. Okay, it's going down again. I really need that uh, that height to go up. But uh, 300, 340. Yeah, so the problem here is that, of course, our, our ion thrusters are becoming less efficient as we go. So that's not good. But it does look like we're going to slingshot past this just fine. I don't think we're going to have a problem here. Um, and it did give us quite a bit of speed. The only problem here is it's going to take us forever to slow down, so that was probably not great. But we need this speed to get out of the planet, so... And if I knew exactly how much we needed, I could stop, but I don't know. I'll, let's go to 400 and then let it ride. Okay. Uh, and while we're at 400, I'm going to press G and I'm going to grab all of our... Let's grab all of our parachutes. Parachute hatch. Let's call this 
all para. Let's go in here, grab our group of all para. And in the event that something bad happens, we will uh, we will ignite our parachutes and uh, save ourselves. But I think we should be fine. Uh, yeah, our peak gravity is going back down. Let's start slowing ourselves down with the dampeners because we're gonna obviously we're we're now going incredibly fast. So, yeah, there we go. Okay. Awesome, crisis averted. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, unknown signal detected. Oh, that's just the standard unknown signal. It's also 19 kilometers away. Good lord. Maybe because we were in the P-Gravity, it's like, oh, let's spawn one on the planet. He'll definitely be able to go get that. But alas, it's too far. All right, P-Gravity is zero. We are now successfully out of the area. We do have a bunch of asteroids around us, but these ones just spawned, so I don't think there's a station uh, in this general area. But we should get a little notification if, we, if, if there is. I don't know exactly where it would be. All right, we're slowed down quite a bit. I really thought we'd find one if we just kind of flew around a little bit, but we're, we're not, we don't seem to be able to find one. I don't know, the radius must be like, what's the radius of finding it? It's like 10 kilometers, right? So I would assume that if you fly anywhere close to it, since 10 kilometers is pretty far, I think those asteroids are closer than 10 kilometers over there. Uh, we should have found one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press K and I'm gonna put them all on so I can see where they are in my, uh, in my GPS. So I have all these new stations highlighted. I don't know which are which. Uh, but I have them all highlighted here. I'm gonna put them on and go to the closest one because I really want to get to one and I want to I, I haven't even tested this so I don't even know if it works for sure So I'm gonna put these on and find whichever one we're near because you know, they're all spread out around the planet uh, So it looks like we have one 18 kilometers over there Okay, so we wouldn't even see one. Let's just head in that general direction over there I'll, I'll remove them again. We'll, we'll head between those two Okay, so we'll head for that 18 kilometers one. So if the radius is 10 kilometers, we obviously wouldn't have found it by now. So maybe that's that's what was happening. I was a little worried that maybe it, it, it like wasn't working or something because that would have been a problem. With the whole lore story, I would have had to make something else up and say like, oh, they were offended by my lack of including a bathroom in their room at the suite down there. Therefore, they decided not to actually come after all. But, uh, but no, it looks like I guess they are here. Let's go and see if we can get that one to spawn. Um, so what I did, by the way, in case any of you guys are interested in figuring out how to do this yourselves, if you have the same issue or something, uh, essentially what I did was uh, I went into the sandbox.sbc file, uh, and there's where you have all of the factions. And if you have economy turned on, uh, those factions will all have, or at least the ones that are uh, economy enabled, will all have um, uh, like three stations, and they'll all have coordinates. And if they're not discovered yet, I'm pretty sure you can move those coordinates to wherever you want. And as soon as you go near those coordinates, uh, they will spawn. So the station will spawn. So currently, the station that we're going to isn't spawned in the world. That's why we can't really like see it or anything. Uh, and if I went into the admin menu, I wouldn't be able to find it. But, ah, there we go. The sacred settlers. But if we go close enough to it, 15 kilometers, it looks like, is that radius. It will actually spawn. So now there is a station over there. All right, let's slow ourselves down in that direction and start going in this direction. I want to get to, why am I going so fast? What the heck? I shouldn't be going 90. I was going like 50 when I when I pressed dampeners. That was weird. Uh, but let's let's get a little closer to this beacon. I'm not going to aim directly for it so we don't crash into it. I don't actually know if damage is enabled in those things, but uh, yeah. All right, let's turn off our dampeners and kind of cruise there. Let's cruise to the cruise. Ah, the sacred settlers. There they are with their big bubble of stuff. <laughs> All right, so the Sacred Settlers apparently are the first nation to, or the first uh, faction rather, to hear our calls from the beautiful uh, moon of Triton. They they heard that there was the refueling outpost, and they're like, oh shoot, let's go and set up a trade station over here, since there's that nice refueling outpost that'll obviously bring in lots of trade. So uh, the Sacred Settlers, it appears, is our first guinea pig for this technique of moving one of these things. Let's find out what they sell. I already know what they sell because I, uh, I, I moved it here, so I know, <laughs> I know the names of them. But let's go and check out what they sell nonetheless. Um, I actually don't know individually what they sell. I do know what kind of, tr what kind of um, uh, thing they are. All right, let's slow ourselves down. We're going way too fast. We'll go into this bubble at a high speed of 45. We've entered a safe zone. Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. Wow, we actually slammed right into it. That was weird. I think it 
turned off my thrusters or something. I don't know what that was, but uh, that could have also just been our horrible uh, aiming. Did we break anything, or is damage not a thing in this? I think damage isn't a thing in this. Uh, grinding is disabled. Yeah, I think damage is just not a thing in this. So we slammed into it, and it didn't do any damage to us. Okay, wow. I wonder if that's exploitable. <laughs> uh, we could probably be going like a uh, thousand kilometers per or a thousand uh, meters per second, and then still slam into this thing without taking damage. That's something to test possibly in a Space Busters episode. But let's hop out of this thing. We don't have a connector currently, so I'm just gonna leave this here. Uh, I want to check out what's in this station. Um, do we have a... Uh, let me actually real quick refuel my... Do I need to refuel my O2 or are we good? Oh, we're good. Okay. Let's hop in here. Alright, beautiful station. Ni I like the nice blue and white look. Uh, you, you always get a random design. Now, when you're in, a, in the settings, you can actually... Before this thing is spawned, you can actually determine what kind of station it is. Um, but it's like it's like station one, station two, station three. So like I don't know what they look like or anything. I just kept them default. But uh, let's hop in here. Let's see how the pros do it. Because this is what I was uh, sort of trying to uh, imitate when I was making those little um, those little rooms down on Triton. And it looks like I did a bad job because these are beautiful. You've got a nice uh, two beds with a table, uh, another nice little counter, and a and a thing right here, and then a locker. I, I really like how they've done this. Um, and then a window even, an interior window, and a schematic. Wow, good stuff, good stuff. And a bathroom, and a shower. A bathroom and a shower, I, I got those mixed up. It's a very luxurious suite over here on the Sacred, uh, the sacred Traders um, HQ. Uh, let's, let's walk around and, uh, and explore. Okay, it looks like here's a door, but there was also a door over there, wasn't there? Or is this just another, is this just a wing? Yeah, it looks like this is just a wing that leads to a cool little viewing platform. Yeah, I really like how they do these things. They're 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 very nice. All right, let's go inside the uh, the main outpost and see what there is for us to yoink. Is there anything in here for us to take? Yes, it looks like we can take some uh, some welders and drills if we want to, but we don't need that. We have upgraded equipment. All right, we're in the uh, the master stairwell. Let's go down first and see what's here. So it looks like this is the store. Let's check out what we have to uh, to buy. Okay, so it looks like we can buy quite a bit of ammo if we wanted to right here. That's not a bad thing if you don't have any magnesium and have run out of ammo. Um, it's a little expensive though for my taste. Uh, bulletproof glass. Is that per bulletproof glass? Because that's ridiculous. Canvas. Wow. Wow, it is expensive. Did I... Wait, hang on. Okay, if I go into... Uh... Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was pressing K and nothing was happening. If I go into factions, um, or no, I want to go to ATM actually. I can do this in game. Uh, okay, so I do have an account balance of 10,000. I guess that's what you just start with. So it looks like I can cash back, which means I'll get, I guess I'll get that money. I really haven't used much of the economy at all, but uh, store wise, do, do I have that 10,000? Yes, I do have the account balance of 10,000. Um, okay. So here's what I want really is, is a data pad. Let's buy one of those real quick. I'm pretty sure if we buy a data pad, those will contain the coordinates of a station. Yes, they do. Okay, a friend of mine who works at the station. Let's create a GPS marker. Um, and we should now see that on our thing. No, it's not that one, is it? Wait. GPS. Okay, there it is. So if I show it on the HUD, we now have that station. But the question is, is it a closed station? Ah, okay, so it's actually, no, that's far. Okay, so it's a far station. So that's one thing. So uh, in the base game, when it works properly, you get a data pad showing your first station. And once you get to that first station and know where it is, you can buy the locations of other stations with these. However, obviously that didn't work for me because I never got a data pad for the first station. So if I want to find the other stations that are around this area, I could buy up these data pads without using my uh, my cheats, which are which are these. And in fact, since we have this option now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and destroy these GPS markers. Since I know where the first one is, I don't, uh, I don't need these anymore. And I probably don't need this anymore either, the location of Rigatoni 1, because that's no longer the location of Rigatoni 1. And I probably don't need these anymore either, if I'm, if I'm being honest. All right, so we have a marker for the Sacred Settlers Station. It's in purple to indicate that it is indeed a station. I'll probably do that for all these as well, make them some form of, of the purple. So we have a, a nice color we're going with. Um, 
Okay, I can probably remove these now, because I'm not going to be going to this station anytime soon, but again, that could be a jump drive target in the future. Uh, let's take a look at what else they have. They have enhanced things if we didn't have this stuff to make them. They have hydrogen refueling, I think, is what this is. Uh, weapons, nice, nice, nice. A zone chip, that's expensive, but I think that's to make a, like your own zone, uh, which we definitely don't want to do. Let's, uh, let's go upstairs and check out what else they have. I don't think they have anything in those. They might. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, let's check out what's inside this. No, oh, okay, so this was the entrance. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, this kind of reminds me of the entrance to the vaults in Fallout. Um, it's got that kind of lower area and then the like catwalk going across. The only difference is that this thing would be a giant, uh, a giant cog wheel that would turn. But yeah, that's actually kind of cool. I like how they did that. Let's, uh, let's go upstairs here. Check out the views. Oh man, you can see the asteroids. If only that wasn't uh, an ugly like blue uh, shield going around this thing, you could see the asteroids. Um, and in fact, it would make sense for, for us to make that a little, a little less ugly, if we could. Maybe, maybe we'll find a way to do that. Got a timer down here. Okay, so if I'm correct, they have a vending machine here. So a vending machine is where you can very quickly ga grab materials, I think. I'm pretty sure they're the same stuff the store has. They might be different stuff, but they're same prices, I think. Uh, contracts. Okay, so this is what I was interested in here. They've got all these contracts since we're in space. They have all the, all the contract types. But we can do any of these, so some of, the, some of them are like acquisition, they want small steel tubes. They want this many of them, and they'll give us 200,000 SC. Uh, acquire iron ingots, they want 185. Wait, they want only 185? I can just like, give you these. Because I have them. Or is that 185k? Let's accept this contract real quick and see if we can go and, uh, go and continue it. All right, so moving back to our ship real quick, they say they only want 145 iron ingots, so let me check real quick. Iron ingot. Uh, I'm gonna put all this stuff back, so this GPS signal... Oh, I can't put it back. Let me just real quick put all this stuff back. Okay, so they say they want 145. Let me just grab 145 and see if that's what they want, because if that is, that is an incredibly easy uh, mission to do. Okay, contract thing. Is this what you wanted? Because if so... Finish. Select the vehicle or character whose inventory contains the items. It's the character inventory, but it looks like we can also select... I guess if we had one connected, we'd be able to select that, but... Okay. Contract sh could not be finished. Select the selected ship does not contain enough items. You want... 185! Oh! Alright, what about now? I should have enough. Finish. Character inventory. Yes. Reputation 4. Payment three, uh, 30,000 SC. Alright, wow. So this is actually a pretty decent way to make money. And actually, so... I have a list of a bunch of ideas I have for Space Engineers content, because that's what YouTubers usually do. They make lists of ideas they have. One of the ideas I have is a mini-series where you only, like, get things by completing contracts and, and stuff like that. It would be kind of interesting, I think, of a, of a mini-series idea. Uh, literally, you would just go around and complete contracts. That's how you'd be able to make money. If you wanted ships, you'd have to buy them. Or if you wanted materials, you'd have to, to buy them from one of these things by earning money. I think that'd be an interesting challenge series. Uh, let me know what you guys think. But anyways, we finished the contract. Let's check out our other acquisitions. It looks like they want 545 of these for so many SC. Are, are these broken? What? That's so much. That's so many credits. All right, let's grab this contract real quick. Uh, let's go check out another acquisition. These are incredibly easy. You want 34 for 100? Okay, easy. Uh, let's see what else you want. Acquisition right here. You want 696 small steel tubes for 200? Easy. Um, yeah, okay, that's all of our acquisition contracts. Let's check these out. Uh, I'm gonna go and complete all these at once. So, uh, get ready. Pretty sure, by the way, if you press K... No, it's not K. Ah, colon is what it is. So if I press colon, oops, if I press colon, yes, okay, so you can actually see the contracts that you have and what they'll give you and stuff by pressing uh, colon, I guess, <laughs> which is the, uh, the, the double dots. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's go and complete all these at once and see how much money we get. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and here is the third one. I don't know why I, uh, I thought I was low on silicon. We have tons of silicon on the ship. Maybe it was from uh, Triton where we were low on silicon. But let's check out our stuff because we should have a lot of money now. Uh, if I go into our ATM, where the heck is the ATM? Oh, maybe it was downstairs? Yeah, maybe it was down here. Let's take the shortcut. Whee! 
I don't think we can take damage in here, but let's let's check out the ATM. Yes, we now have an account balance of 607,000, so we're quickly becoming very rich. So we have a big balance, which means we could really go shopping. I thought this stuff was expensive. It's not actually that expensive. Let's buy a couple more data pads. Uh, buy, 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 buy. Let's just buy all of them. Why not? We'll check out where these things are. We'll get a couple of GPS markers, and we should be able to find all the all the stations that are close to us. Whoa, look at that color right there. Let's get out, out of here real quick so we can see that. Dude, oh my gosh, that's so cool. He got like the, the nice the sunset effect going on over there. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's head back in here real quick. I'm gonna stand on the bow of a of a new ship headed for a new world. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand over here and uh, check out these data pads. So if I right click, I can read them, create a GPS marker. Let's just go through them and do this. There's a lot of them, so uh, let's use the speed of, of editing. All right, we've got all the stations uh, listed out. Let's check them out. Okay, so that one's far. Uh, that one's far. It's far. Um, let's see. That one's far. Um, any other, any, any, any close ones? That one's far. That one is far. That one is far. 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 Yeah, that really far. That one. Good lord. Okay, so I think, uh, wait, is this Triton right here? Wait, okay. Is that Triton right there? I think that is. I don't think any of the ones that I pasted around here are the ones that I was given. Oops, we have low energy. Let's go uh, Let's go sit in this ship real, right here real quick. Um, yeah, I don't think any of the ones that I pasted in close are ones that we discovered in the station. So what we're gonna have to do is either wait for it to restock. I don't know if it restocks with data pads um, or we're gonna have to, uh, you know, do some flying around the area. All right, anyway, now that we're around here with a lot of money, let me real quick check to see if there's anything else I want to buy, and then we're going to do one of the other missions, one of the uh, the um, the more adventurous missions. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to buy a new pistol, because why not? <laughs> they've got the magazines, they've got the pistols themselves. Let's go ahead and buy this. It's incredibly cheap. And let's go ahead and buy a couple of, uh, a couple of magazines as well for our new pistol. We could buy a Pro-1. We have enough money to buy a Pro-1. That would honestly be, be pretty solid of a weapon. Let's buy a Pro-1. Why not? It's on discount anyway. How much was it on discount for? Uh, they might have only been selling one, so we don't... We might not even be able to see. No, they, Oh, they have Row-1s as well. The Pro-1 is the better one, though. The Pro-1 is like the best rocket launcher in the game uh, since they added all that stuff. It takes missiles as ammo, which is why they're not selling uh, the ammunition. Unless they are. They might actually be... No, they're not. Okay. Let's buy a couple of, uh, a couple of these. Yep, we have 10 magazines, we have a Pro 1, and we have this. We bought weapons, so when we get back to Pertam, which is our end goal, not for this episode, but probably next episode, uh, we will be able to um, do some fighting. You know, we'll be able to do some hand-to-hand -hand combat. And by that, I mean weapon, like, gun combat, not uh, not hand-to-hand. -hand. All right, just got a call about a, uh, about a station that's in need of repair. Andrew's Repair Services is on the case. It's 11 kilometers out. But, uh, no, we, we should get there in no time. All right, we're about halfway there, and we're living on a prayer, and we're, uh, just, just about there to start our repairs. That, that was interesting. Um, but anyways, we don't have a repair ship, so this is gonna be kind of, uh, kind of... Oh, wait, no, it's a search mission. What am I saying? It's not gonna be a problem at all. I don't know why for, for us, uh, I don't know why I keep going back to the repair missions, but no, it is a search one. So, uh, we should be good. Okay, welcome to the last known location. Now the thing is, I'm pretty sure the way these work is that there's a deviation. So if I press colon, uh, we'll see that there is a maximum GPS deviation of 750 meters. So within 750, which we are right now, we should be able to possibly see the ship we're looking for, since it's a search mission. Um, so let's go to the center and we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a gander. We'll have a look around. We're looking for a ship. That might be it. I see some sort of... Unless that's an asteroid. I'll, I think this is probably a better mission on planets, honestly, because uh, because it's easier to spot things. In space, uh, you know, if the ship doesn't stand out... <laughs> good luck finding it. This is actually an impossible mission. <laughs> I'm looking around and I cannot see anything. It's just the vast expanse of space. We can start searching a little bit, maybe? Go this way? Oh wait, hang on. Maybe it's not impossible. Ah, it's not impossible. There's something out here. Hey, okay, contract was successfully finished. Wait, so did it? Oh, okay, so the contract automatically finishes once you do that. 
And also, what the heck? What's going on? Oh, okay, it vanished. Okay. That was interesting. Um, okay, so it looks like the contract automatically finishes. So if you wanted to do those, um, like, kind of, uh, like, you could chain them is what I'm trying to say. You don't have to actually go back to the, uh, the station, any like, every time you do something. So that's um, pretty good for efficiency, I guess. All right. That's a good, uh, a good one completed. Um, with that done, I think the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, try and find another trade station. So we have this one already, but we're going to do another pass in... Let's see, where's... Okay, so that's Pertam. Let's go this way. I don't remember exactly which direction any of the stations were, but let's make a pass this way and see if we can find one of them. All we have to do is get within 15 kilometers and it'll show itself to us. So, uh, so let's see if we can find another. We're going to get ourselves to a decent speed of maybe 100, maybe 200, something like that. And we're going to see if we can find one of these things. Let's just aim here. Hopefully we don't get sucked in by the planet. But again, it seems like we have pretty good capability of... Uh, of getting out of that if we do. Yeah, so these asteroids spawn really far off, and so I thought maybe they weren't my asteroids, maybe they are asteroids from the station, but I think that might not be the case. That's a big asteroid over there. Yo, that's a big asteroid. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on, no, 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 there's actually one over here, okay. So there is a station. All right, let's head ourselves over there. The DM, no, the DVMK, I can't read. Let's head over to it. Uh, now I told you before this, I know what all the all the stations are. I actually don't know what this one is. So, like, I don't know this. Uh, I don't know this faction. I mean, obviously, I placed it here because they they spawn millions of miles away. But uh, but we'll have to see what it is. It's it's a complete surprise to me what is in that thing. Other than the odds of it being a trade one is pretty low since we found a trade one last time. There's only one more trade station around. Triton. I hope it's a builder station. <laughs> of the five, I think there's only one builder station. Builder stations are the ones that would provide you with a, a ship if you want to buy a ship. They'll provide you with... I think that's it. I think they have ships. I think they probably also have a store with generic materials, but uh, but the odds are that this is an ore station. The odds are pretty high that this is an ore station. Actually, wait. You know, there's a famous game show question, and I'll, I'll bring it up here, because it's a similar to our question right now. There were five stations, two of them were ore, two of them were trader, and one of them was builder. So, are the odds of finding a builder station now one in four or one in five? That's the great question. Are the odds one in four or one in five? Because we already know, it's, it's given that one of the stations is a trade station, because we know where that, we already know that one, like where that one is. So that's technically off the table. So there's only four unknown stations, and one of them is the uh, is the builder station. So the odds of this one is, is that one in four? Or is it one in five? It's, it's from a game show where they have to choose a door. Essentially the way it works is there are three doors. One of the doors is a prize door, and the other two doors are not prize doors. And I might get this wrong, so forgive me if I get this wrong. Uh, you'll correct me in the comments. But uh, one is a prize door, the other two are, are false doors. Uh, and the guy says, so technically at this point you have one in three doors that's a prize door. So what the host says is this door, no, wait. Ah, okay, so what happens is you choose a door, you say that's the prize door, and then the host- It's the door that's not the prize door and says, okay, not the prize, not the prize door, do you want to take it off? Okay, 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 okay. okay, I just explained it, but I explained it horribly, so I pulled up the Wikipedia page. Apparently this is called the Monty Hall problem. Um, and essentially the way it goes is uh, you're on a game show and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a prize and behind two doors is not a prize. So it's something something bad uh, or, or, or like nothing behind two of the doors. Uh, and you say, you pick a door, right? The, the game show host tells you to pick a door. Uh, once you've picked the door, the game show host picks another one of the doors and says, this right here is not the correct door. So this is, the, this is a nothing door. So he picks one of the nothing doors and says, now that you know that that door over there is a nothing door, would you like to change your would you like to change your door? Um, so if he chose door number one and he says door number three has nothing behind it, would you like to change to door number two? And the question behind the Monty Hall problem uh, that that pretty much has everyone baffled. There's actually answers for it. It doesn't have everyone baffled, but it has normies like me baffled. Uh, is well, do, do are your odds better if you switch doors, or are they better if you stayed with the same door? Okay, I can see now how we crashed into this thing, because this station is a whole lot smaller than it actually looks. Um, 
But essentially the trap in the question is that uh, you've got the three doors, so it's obviously a one and three when you start. But the question is that when, when he tells you which door is uh, a nothing door, is it suddenly a one and two question, or is it still a one and three? So that's, that's pretty much the, you know, the gist of it. Someone in the comments, please explain better. I know some of you guys are really good at math and statistics, uh, and this is definitely a math and statistics problem. Um, so yeah, I don't even know what we brought it up from. Oh, because there were five stations, and the odd, so the odds of a builder station was one in five, but now there are four stations, so are the odds one in four, or are they still one in five? I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's get over here. Let's see what kind of station this is. Uh, so far, it looks pretty awesome. It's got a nice red and white color scheme, and it looks like it's got a cool crane. I'm going to have to yoink this, uh, yoink this um, idea here, because that looks really awesome as like a, a, like a just for looks kind of thing. But uh, I also like that little doorway. Let's go inside this thing. We've got our gun out just in case anyone tries to mess with us, you know? Uh, oh, wow, they've got... Wow. For free? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. We now have another pistol. Um, let's go and check this one out. Okay, looks like this one has... Wait, is this a bathroom back here? Nice. I like the hidden bathroom. It's a really cool a really cool look. You got some clay and cola. Uh, I really like this look that... Oh, wow. That's actually kind of cool. They've got this window. Awesome. Nice little meeting area. I like it. Let's check out what's over here. It looks like we got our store and our contract. So this is where we get to find out if it's a builder station or a uh, or a ore station. Let's hope it's an ore station or a builder station. It is a builder station. So builder stations have all these. And uh, wow, you can now see that the money that I have is actually not that much when you have freighters worth 178,000 million rather SC. Is that the most expensive one? Yeah, it looks like the most expensive one on here. Uh, of course, we can buy med kits. If we wanted to, we could probably even buy one of these mini merchant things. Um, or a little... Cur no, that's expensive. Wow. Yeah, we could definitely make enough money to, to buy one of these, though, uh, within reasonable time. It looks like they've got a discount on med kits. That's about it. Let's check out the contracts that they're offering. Same stuff, I think. They have an acquisition for Cobalt. Uh, let's see what else they have. Acquisition for Construction Components. Acquisition for metal grids is going to provide a lot, but metal grids are kind of hard to make, to be fair. Yeah, so if you had a jump drive, haul missions wouldn't be that bad, but without a jump drive, that is just painful. That's probably why they quote an hour and five minutes, uh, because like they're quoting without a jump drive. But yeah, you got some nice missions here, you got a store. All right, all in all, it's a pretty nice station. Wait, is there some more we have to explore? I think we've explored all of it. Yeah, it's a pretty nice station, I, I gotta say. Uh, if we want to buy a ship, this is where we buy it. Honestly, it might not be a bad idea to buy, like, one of these fighters. Like, maybe Fighter Mark II, we could go to one of those Mayday signals, or maybe we could take on that, uh, that, um, that signal over there. Let me know what you guys want, uh, want me to do in the next episode. Again, the options are going to Pertam or staying in space. Uh, so write down in the comments what you want to see, and we will, uh, and we'll do it. Eventually, we will go back to Pertam, but it doesn't have to be next episode if it doesn't, if you guys, uh, if you guys want us to stay in space a little longer. Um, but I hope you guys like this episode. If you liked it, put your, uh, or, or hit the like button. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button. Put your questions and comments in the comments section below. And I will see you guys in the next episode. I can't shoot in here. <laughs> in the next episode of Space Engineers Survival in Space.